Hey guys, it's Cassandra Color, and today I'm going to be talking about the Conspiracy palette and I'm going to try out some sponges that a company sent to me. I know that this palette came out a long time ago, but to be honest, I just had some things happen in my life where I never got to reviewing it or even talking about it. And not only is this me putting on makeup and trying something somebody sent me, which is the first time that anybody has ever sent me anything, so that's exciting. But also I want to talk about um, the drama surrounding Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star. And I have some footage of when I first got this palette and I got one for my friend as well and the story surrounding that. So basically when this palette came out, there was a lot of hype around it. I don't have to describe that it was Shane Dawson doing a documentary on how he created this palette and everybody was able to go on the journey with him on how he chose the packaging and all the shades and down to the clasp and everything about this palette. It's a very special palette. In my mind, is something that is a part of makeup history. It has an amazing story and I love that about this palette. It's not just a product, like there's a lot that goes with it. So when Shane came out with the documentary on this palette and making this palette and all those things, of course, I have always loved Shane Dawson and I've always loved Jeffree Star separately. So when they came together to make something, I, of course, I was very interested. When the palette actually came out, I think I do have some footage of when I was trying to purchase the palette and I was freaking out. Oh, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Go to cart, go to cart, go to cart. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on. No. I got it in my cart. <laughs> and I can't have it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Oh my God. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. All right. There's overwhelming orders. Fine. Sure. The website was going down. Everybody was losing their mind over not being able to get this palette. So what happened to me was I just wanted to get this palette and I also wanted to get um, the Blue Blood palette and just like a few other things at the same time. I hadn't made a purchase last year except for I think one other time for makeup at all. So I was really excited about it. I actually made a reminder in my phone for when this palette was released and I never do that. <laughs> So what was happening to me was I was putting it in my cart and I wasn't able to check out. I wasn't able to check out and I kept on doing that, I kept on doing that. So basically at the end of it, I accidentally purchased two. I got one with my Blue Blood palette and a highlighter and I think a couple liquid lipsticks and then I purchased one by itself. And I didn't even realize that that's what I had done because neither one of them actually went all the way through and I felt really defeated. So it wasn't until uh, I want to say like a week later that I even got an email that confirmed that I had made any type of purchase. I got one and then it was like a few days later I got a confirmation of another one. I was like, oh shit, you know, I accidentally bought two. So I bought one with the Blue Blood palette and some other things and then I bought one by itself. So I actually had two coming to me by accident just because I was trying to at least just get one. I did only get the palette. I didn't get any of the rest of the collection. I was interested in it, but I just was already spending a good amount of money. So when I figured this out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna be getting two palettes. Maybe I'll do a review and I'll have one for a giveaway on my channel. But it was pretty evident to me that there were a lot of people around me, um, makeup artists and etc., that were really upset that they didn't get this palette. And one person that is really special to me, her name is Victoria, was online on Facebook and, and we were talking and she was posting statuses and stuff like that, like, oh, I really wanted this palette, like, oh, this sucks, you know? And I was thinking in my mind, yeah, it would be really cool to do a giveaway, but how cool would it be just to give it to my friend, you know? <laughs> and so surprise her with it. Victoria is somebody that's really special to me because it doesn't matter like what I'm doing or whatever. She has always supported me, always shared my stuff, always really liked what it is that I actually do. I've even sent her footage before. I published it before, which means that I trust her. There's only a few people around me that I trust with footage or things that I haven't published first to want to know their opinion about what it is I'm doing or whatever. And I did go to high school with her, but we weren't close in high school. I just like knew who she was. It wasn't until I started doing like makeup. She was like, wow, this is cool. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. She's like really excited about what I do. And that's just awesome. I love that. So when this palette came out, just like me, she's into Shane. She's into Jeffrey. 
and I decided, okay, I'm not going to do a giveaway. I really want to give this to her because that is so meaningful, you know? So I contacted her husband and I told her husband, you know, hey, I accidentally got two and he already knew what I was talking about because she had been like talking about this pile, like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> and he was like, oh my gosh, she will freak out. And I said, I want it to be a surprise. Don't tell her all that I ask of you is that you record it horizontally <laughs> so that I can use it as footage for a YouTube video. I think that would be really cool. And he was like, yeah, definitely, I can do that. So it took a while to come. I think mine with the um, Blue Blood palette and everything came first. I wanna say it took like two or three weeks to actually get to me. And then after that, it took another week for just the second conspiracy palette to come. When that palette came, it had like Jeffree Star stuff all on the outside of it. And I was like, oh, she's gonna know what this is. So I had to repackage it, send it to her husband and say, hey, you know, here's the tracking number, it's on its way. Make sure that he got it from the mailbox so that she wouldn't accidentally open it up without him. He went and got it, brought it to her and recorded it. And I have the footage of it. And I just want you to understand that this is a reaction that a lot of people had about this palette. It was so exciting when it came out and it meant so much because like I said, there's so much meaning behind everything in this palette and there's something really special about that. So here she is reacting to getting that palette. Oh my God. What do you got? Uh, Who's uh, it from? It's from Cassandra, Cassandra. Oh my God, I know, oh my God. I need a knife, I can't open it. I can't open it. Oh, screw it. Oh my gosh. Be careful with it. careful with it. <gasps> that little shit. <gasps> oh my god. Okay, I can't. What is it? I gotta open it. I don't, I know exactly what it is. This is a Jeffree Star box. Oh, screw it. I am ripping this son of a bitch open. Oh my god! No fucking way! Victoria, <laughs> quick <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Oh are sneaky as shit. <laughs> that dirty dog. Okay, we'll say bye. Bye, thank you so much. So now that you've seen <laughs> that reaction, which is priceless and amazing, I'm so glad that I did that. Um, I actually recorded myself opening up the palette as well. I had just gotten off from work when I got mine and I was still in my scrubs. I had the Blue Blood palette and a few other things in my box as well, but I just kind of wanted you to see my reaction when I got it also. I got the box. I got I got the box. Hello, this is Cassandra Color and I have a box. Am I in focus? Yes. Are we recording? Yes. Do I have a box? Yes. <laughs> I'm so, oh my God, I'm so excited. This is the conspiracy palette in here. It's right here. It's here. It's here. It's high. It's here. I got some other stuff too because I haven't bought makeup in a really, really, really long time. I cannot get this open fast enough. I'm using my eyebrow scissors. Ah! Okay, it's pink. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Calm down. This isn't a draw. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I can't get it open fast enough. The tape is nice. <laughs> it's coming out for me. <laughs> Just get in my way. I'm just going to say 
I have not been, oh, I can't believe it's in my hands. I can't, I haven't been this excited about something since, since champagne pop, like straight up. Um, wow, there it is. Holy shit. Look at that pretty sticker. Oh, it's nice. I also got the blue blood palette. Okay. All right. Oh my God. <laughs> I guess that's from, do you see that? It's a little bit fat in the middle. I guess that's from the packaging. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking. Oh, I definitely don't have any palettes this nice. Oh, I definitely don't. Nope. Oh, my broken ass Morphe palette. I've been using it every single video. Okay, there's a little plastic sheath here. Oh, okay, let's open it. Okay. Wow, it made a noise. <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Holy fucking ass. Okay. It smells like nothing. Oh, wow. Okay, one thing I have been wondering is if this will sit up when it sits flat, a little bit, a little bit. Do you see that because of the shape of this? I was actually hoping that it would maybe even sit up like that, but it sits kind of like this plastic piece. Oh, satisfying. <laughs> oh my God, it's here in my hands. Okay, swatching, 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 swatching. <laughs> I got shit everywhere. By the way, I just got off work. I'm still in scrubs, so there's that. Uh, Wow, that feels amazing. Wow. Oh, look at that! I can breathe, I can live, I can wear, I can blend in with the backdrop. It's, it's, it's awesome to see myself wear it. I've wanted one of these for like... I've put this in my cart and not bought it like a hundred times. <laughs> I've only bought stuff on Jeffrey's website four times and it was once in 2017, once in 2018, and twice in 2019, including this purchase. And all I did was order like one thing at a time. Every time I ordered Drug Lord, I have the ice cold highlighter and two more refills on the Drug Lord lipstick, actually. I think that's all I've ever had. Yeah, that's all I've ever had. And the reason that I bought this so many times is because it is so white. It is useful. It is a tool. It is different. When I can't get something to be white, whether it be face paint, eyeshadow, needed a base, whatever it is, this will take me there. Oh my God, I can't believe I have all this stuff like in front of me. Like this is the nicest shit that I own. What the fuck, Jeffrey? What the fuck, Jeffrey? <laughs> I feel like this this is kind of like, eh, you know, like <laughs> my everyday palette. That's, I'm still going to use it. <laughs> I'm weird about this stuff. I even still have like the little sheath that came on the Jaclyn Hill uh, champagne pop. I keep the little postcards. I stick this stuff everywhere. Okay, half of it's still sticky, which means I can stick it to something. Stick it to the mirror. Yeah. It's like, hello. Welcome. <laughs> but I've been watching review videos for like weeks now. I've been, all my other friends that got it, I'm like, send me pictures, I have to know. <laughs> like I've been fucking psycho over this palette. I, I guess the thing that surprised me the most about this palette is that the, and that I didn't see anybody else kind of like show, is that this um, spiral lead design is connected to this metal piece. Like it's, that's a good shot of it right there. Like you can see the circle spirally in this metal piece right here. And that little bitty star up there, it's so pretty. And just to get a close up while we're here, I guess. And then I'll turn it down. Whoa, it's almost like the yellow's glowing. Look at that. I want every palette he's made to be real with you, but you know, like one thing at a time. <laughs> 
Okay, I feel like a real makeup artist now. I don't want to close them. I want to keep looking at them. Okay, bye! This is me now. I have nice palettes. I have nice things. It's no big deal. I'm just going to walk around like this now. Oh, hi! Do you need your makeup done? Well, we can't use these palettes on you, honey, because they are too nice for your face. I'm sorry. It's like, eh, to close it. It's like a little, eh, you know? <laughs> okay, so now you can kind of feel what kind of excitement there was behind this palette and I haven't seen as much excitement about a makeup product in general in my entire makeup career. Before this, um, I remember being really excited about Champagne Pop, which is a highlighter created by Jaclyn Hill, and I was very excited to get that. I stood in line, I went to Sephora, was it Sephora? Yeah. I went to the store, whatever it was. When I got it, like I was opening it up, like shaking and like, but since then, this is it. And I was more excited about this than I was Champagne Pop. This is like, there's just so much thought into it. And you can keep looking at this palette and you can like see more, like there's this little bitty star, like right there. And even like the swirlies continue into this. So because of that, this is just something really special to me. And regardless of when it was released, which was however many months ago, this is my favorite palette. And I don't pull for it all the time. What I use most of the time is this, which is just something I use every day. It's just got like regular shades in it. But this has a story. This has excitement. This has so much meaning and feeling and like when you open it, it's just an experience. I think this is how makeup should be made. So I do want to touch into like the drama that's going on with them right now, which is kind of insane, to be honest. I didn't see that coming at all. I know that there's going to be some people that are like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you're supporting Shane and all this stuff. And I'm going to say this, okay? The stuff, the videos that he had come out before, like however long ago it was, 10 years, whatever, I don't agree with those messages. Yes, I think that he was wrong for putting out those videos, but I'm going to tell you this too. When I get Facebook memories, pop up and stuff that I posted 10 years ago like for example I just deleted a status I posted on Facebook 10 years ago and I said ha ha I'm drunk why did I post that <laughs> I don't know okay I don't know first of all I wasn't as mature as I am now. I don't. I didn't know as much as I do now. And you know, I give myself that leeway. I'm like, all right, you know, it sucks that I was stupid or whatever. And I would give the same leeway to someone else as well. Like, okay, he put out some videos that were absolutely terrible, and some people aren't going to agree with me on this, and that's okay. But I don't think that it takes away from something amazing that he put his heart into, and you can feel that there would not be so many people so excited about this palette if it wasn't so much of him and his dedication and what he actually wanted to put out if he wouldn't have put his heart into this. I can feel it. And we cannot completely disregard somebody's piece of amazing artwork because they made mistakes in the past. And that is my personal opinion. You are allowed to have your own opinion. But that's my opinion with that. As far as Jeffrey goes, Jeffrey is actually a lot like me. He almost comes off a little bit um, cocky because he has a lot of confidence. And also he's been through a lot of hard things, which makes him almost untouchable because he's reached that point of a very, very low. So he's not as scared of things that could bring him to a bad place. And I'm similar to him in that way because I've experienced so much hurt in my life and I've always had my grandma telling me, you're perfect, you're beautiful, you're amazing. And from that, I have a confidence as well. And that creates almost a perfect formula of passion and fire that makes you almost indestructible to an extent. And not everybody has that. Some people don't get that in their lifetime. They either don't have, um, you know, hurt to where they see that depth of their soul and the first time that they have some kind of drama or whatever, it like just feels like their whole life is crumbling. And it sucks. And I'm not trying to define that that's what happened with anybody, but a lot of this cancel culture that we have going on is why we lost Jenna Marbles. It's why Shane hasn't been as pre present on social media. And I'm not trying to define what happened to him. I'm just expressing what my opinion is about the situations. I think it's unfortunate that a lot of people are forgetting how amazing this was and the ride that he took us on with that documentary. I think that it's depressing that people will completely discount someone. And I don't agree with cancel culture. 
If you cut your arm, you don't cut the arm off. You put a band-aid on, you heal, and you move on. And that is just my opinion. And it's really interesting because when you're behind the keyboards and when you're sitting and you're commenting on something where you're not in front of somebody's face, it's almost like people have this feeling where they can say whatever they want to say. It's almost like road rage, like when you're in the car and you're yelling obscenities at someone that's speeding in front of you or whatever. It's almost like you feel safe that you can say these terrible things because they're not really there. But the truth of the matter is, if they were sitting like face to face in front of each other, somehow people get more agreeable. It's like they're like, oh, well, yeah, like I understand what you're saying, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people don't do that when they're behind their keyboards and it's a lot of that. So it's a, so easy for people to just like hate. And I don't, I don't like it. I don't, I don't believe in cancel culture. I don't believe in leaving nasty comments or saying that someone is just a terrible person for things that they did or said or made in the past. So for that, I just want to say that I support Shane and I support Jeffrey. And I think that they are both amazing artists and Jeffrey has the best makeup brand in my opinion. He just makes awesome stuff. He just does. The best stuff that I have is from him and this Anastasia. I, I mean, I, I'm probably gonna say this again in the video, but these Anastasia Norvina palettes, I don't know what it is about them. I wasn't even like super interested just because I don't buy a lot of makeup, but I swatched a few of these in the store and like, whoo wee. I know that's kind of a little bit off, off topic, but I don't just like everything, okay? I don't just like buy a bunch of stuff. I don't talk about like, oh yeah, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy that. That's not me. I've never been that type of person. So for me to be excited about something is saying something, okay? It's amazing. I think it deserves a bow for all of time. Because I've been watching Shane for many years though too, I wasn't watching him back when he put out the videos that he's being canceled for now or whatever, but I was watching him when he put out food videos. I watched him when he was with Trisha. Um, I watched a lot. I probably have watched all of his conspiracy videos. I love that he put the food videos um, shade in here because like for me that's kind of like a monumental portion of his career. He was putting out videos more often then and they were just hilarious and they were just him like talking to the camera, funny, saying stuff. And I love that because I feel like it's him in this palette. Like I said, you do not have to agree with what I'm saying, but I am allowed to have my own opinion. And my opinion is this palette rocks. It is a piece of makeup history. And the footage of me opening this palette for the first time and the footage of Victoria getting this palette by surprise deserves to see the light of day. And I wanted to do this makeup look, which was inspired by another makeup artist here on YouTube. Along with this palette being in the video, I am reviewing these sponges and when I put on the Conspiracy palette and did this makeup look. So I was sent these sponges. They are from High Beauty. They sent them to me to review. She did offer me compensation. I told her no, that I didn't need that, that I would just make a review, but I also did tell her that I would give them an honest review and tell you guys whether I like them or not. I know you're kind of like sponges, like what? Like everybody knows what they want with sponges at this point, right? But this, believe it or not, is the first product that anybody's ever sent me for free. And I'm really bright. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this down. I know, you know, a lot of people have an assumption of like when you make videos and you're this makeup person or whatever that you get like all of these this free stuff in the mail or like a lot of the stuff that I get is free, no. This never happened for me. Nobody has ever sent me anything for free, believe it or not. I know, it's hard to believe. But these people right here, hi beauty, hi beauty, like hi beauty, okay, thank you. Thank you for sending me something. I know it's just sponges. I'll be honest, I don't know how excited I am about it, but I am going to give it a try. And the reason that I say that is I'm so used to using, okay, you know, what everybody uses. This one is by Morphe and this one is by Real Techniques. I use these all the time. I have a lot of them. I only have one of these, but I have like, I don't know, 17 of these. These are much more easily accessible because you can get them at Walmart. This one you have to order online unless you have a Morphe store by you, which I'm pretty sure is just in California. I could be wrong about that. But these you have to order online. The idea with these is that you are not supposed to wet them. And the benefit in that is that they don't collect bacteria because basically any type of moisture is where bacteria grows, right? So 
With these, you're supposed to wet them. This one is pre-wet, so it's a little bit bigger and squishier, but these you're not supposed to wet. I do have some confusion with that though, because I've been thinking about that. Like, okay, at first I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, what a cool idea. But then I was thinking like, you gotta wash them, right? Like, <laughs> You can't just like let them continue to build up product in them. So I, I guess there would be less bacteria because you don't have to wet them to use them. But I would assume that you would still have to wet them to wash them. I'll be honest, um, especially if I'm in a hurry, I don't wash my sponges every single time. You should. But with these, the idea is it says, our non-wet sponge is designed to ensure that your makeup formula stays on your face while keeping the bacteria away. That's our promise. Simply apply the foundation onto the sponge without water and then gently rub the product onto your face. So yeah, you're not supposed to wet them. Um, this is the first product I've ever been sent. So this is a very exciting moment for me. You know, um, I didn't pay anything. I just like gave her my address. Not sure if I was supposed to do that, but uh, had to receive it somehow. I don't know how other people that send PR do that. I think that most of them are have um, PR stuff sent to like a PO box, which you have to pay for. That doesn't make sense for me at this point because I'm literally never sent anything for free, which is cool with me because to be real with y'all, I don't really have a lot of stuff and I will be doing a studio tour that's on my list of things that I want to do so you can get an idea of what I do have. I do have a lot more than the normal person. I will say that. I do. However, I don't buy a lot of stuff. Generally, like this last year, um, I bought some refills on a few things and that's it. The only thing that I'm actually really intrigued to buy is Jeffree Star products and that's just because like I don't know, I feel like once you've got like a palette of browns, like how many browns do you really need? You know, and I went through an experimental phase. I'm not saying that I didn't ever have a point in my life where I bought a bunch of stuff because I did. I had a period of my life where I bought every foundation at the drugstore so I can get an idea. Like every time I went to the drugstore, I bought a foundation. And over a few years, I tried them all. Now there's a lot more different foundations, so of course I haven't tried them all at this point. But I already went through my experimental phase. I know what I kind of like and I stick to what's good. And that's just what I like to do. So somebody sent me something for free and it's right here in my hands and they just sent it to me. I didn't have to do anything else and I think that's kind of cool. So just to be clear, it was free. Okay, free. All right, all right. Free, all right. Free, free. Okay, okay. Free, free, free. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I just think it's really cool that somebody trusted me with their product to show it on any of my social media to try it out. And it was a good agreement because the lady that I talked to, she reached out to me on Facebook and she basically said, you know, you don't have to say that you like it. All we want you to do is to review the product. And I just think that that's really cool. There's no pressure in that. And I like the company for that reason. I did go to their website. All that they sell, as far as I know, is just this set of sponges. And I'm going to use these to do my base today. I do have my eyebrows on somewhat. And then after that, I'm going to use a conspiracy palette to do my eyeshadow. So two birds with one stone today. So first thing I'm gonna say about this packaging, okay? When you look at the packaging, you can see that there's like this plastic, thing here that's holding the sponges in place. And I can already see from just like looking inside of here that that has left marks on the sponges. Now I'm just gonna give, you know, a real quick uh, suggestion to this company, uh, just take that shit out, you don't need it. Nobody cares if the sponges get jumbled around. Just my suggestion there. Because you're not supposed to wet it, I'm gonna say that this is not going to come out. And because of that, that may leave marks on your face, okay? Well, oh my gosh, they're a lot softer than I expected, I will say that. They're not hard like the Dollar Tree sponges. Let me feel the difference between these two, actually. This one does feel a little bit firmer than the wet Real Technique sponge. Same thing. This one does feel a little bit firmer, but maybe by like 10%. Okay. So what I was saying is though, these little marks on here is from that piece of packaging and um, it's an easy fix, but there's that. I would think if you clean them and wet them, that would come out, hopefully. So I'm going to start with my primer. Pores, no, pour, what, uh, pores refiner, primer, pores, refiner, 
pores refiner primer. Is that what they call it now? No, pores no more, pores refiner primer. <laughs> This, okay, I use it in every tutorial that I've ever used, ever. Let's get it in focus, cool. This, okay, I use it in every tutorial I've ever done, ever. It is the best. I use it on everybody, including clients, myself, everything. I really like it because it fills in the pores. I bought it for somebody that um, had older skin and a lot of pores, thinking that I was just going to use it on that type of skin texture, and I use it on myself now. It helps smooth over where I have pimples and stuff too. I just love it. It is the best. I've tried other stuff here and there, but I always wind up going back to this one. So I do have um, like wrinkles or creases in my forehead up here. It's funny because I know that I didn't, I, I've had Botox, okay, I have it, all right, and it looks better now. You can't really even tell. I know that in the conspiracy um, footage where I first opened the palette, I had never had Botox before. You're gonna be able to see my wrinkles more. Um, the reason I'm telling you this though is because I started using a new foundation that I've never used before. This one is the Dior Forever Skin Glow. I always get foundations in a tanner shade and in a lighter shade. I have shade two comma five in and one in. I like to mix my own shade, especially since you know I'm always going Florida and tanning and whatever. I have some really interesting tan lines from that. I've been using this and I started using it because before I got uh, Botox in my forehead, I was always having like a creasing situation happening on my forehead. Now it's not as much of a problem, um, but it is almost time for me to get Botox again. However, that's why I started using this foundation. So that's the foundation I'm gonna be using with these sponges. Now they market these as this one is nighttime and this one is a daytime glow. I'm just gonna say that that's just a marketing tactic that they're using using for the different colors of sponges to make you feel like you need two sponges. I don't want to talk shit, but I feel like that's really what it is. I will say this, I do like darker sponges better so that um, the sponges don't get stained. However, I do like light sponges at time because then you can see where things are at where you need to clean it, I guess you could say. So I don't have a huge preference between the two. I will say that the pink one feels a little bit softer than the black one. I don't know why, but it is to a degree that's noticeable, but not like super, super noticeable. So I think that since the pink one feels a little bit softer, and I do want to see how the foundation spreads on the sponge, I'm going to use this one to do the foundation all over my face. However, I do have some uh, pimples right now, so I need to spot conceal and use this for that first. I'm going to be using the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's just a thicker consistency type of concealer. I like that for pimples in particular so that it will cover up the texture. And I just spot conceal with that before I put on my foundation. So I'm just going to start that with a brush. All right, I'm going to use a sponge. Here we go. It feels really nice. I'm using the end that has the mark on it from the packaging and it's not leaving any marks on me so that's cool. I do like the pointed end on it. It's obviously much easier to get up in here. All right so I'm gonna mix my foundation. Okay so I'm just gonna see if this is a match for me. That looks pretty good. I'm trying to get the right frame for this and you can see a little bit in my studio behind me But I think it's fine because I want you to be able to like actually see my skin for this part So I'm going to use the pink sponge I have matched the foundation to my face and I'm just going to grab the foundation that I make and put it on my face with this beauty blender So I'm going to use this end first It feels really nice. I'm not gonna lie. It feels nice. It feels nice. Not as nice as this But by how much? Okay, first thing I'm noticing right now, it's soaking up more of the product. Part of the reason that you want to wet your sponge is because it doesn't hold as much of the product. However, the sponges steal more of the product than a brush would because when you put the liquid product on a brush, it's just on the bristles and it's going on your face. It's almost like painting a house. So it can be too full of coverage, like painting your face. A sponge kind of puts a thin, even layer across your face, which is more desirable. It makes you look more natural, I guess you could say. I will say though, when I had worse pimples, I liked using a brush because I needed that heavier coverage. However, I would use a sponge even then in places where I didn't need to use the brush. Um, but this is soaking up more of the product, so maybe it's a good medium between the two. Feels nice, feels nice. This foundation is just so pretty. It's got like a 
satin finish almost. And I'm using like double the product right now, I'm noticing, because it is soaking up a lot of the product into the sponge. I got a product for free, for free. They sent it to me, me, me. Always bring your foundation down your neck, onto your ears a little bit. All right, that's a pretty good even coverage. So I do want to use this end a little bit. I'm just going to do it on the back of my hand. I want to see if that's actually going to leave. It's not leaving a mark. Okay, so I've got some product on here, okay? And I'm just going to go like, like that. There's no mark from that little thing. I was expecting that to happen, but it didn't. So that's cool. I still can't believe somebody sent me something. I know that's like, oh my gosh, it's fine, you're a makeup artist. That's what you, yeah, you know, everybody's a makeup artist now. I, I feel like, I feel bad saying that because I don't mean it to be like, ah. Because like, it's really cool that so many people are into what I've been into for a long time. But at the same time, you know, I don't know that they're going to make any money from me doing this and they didn't have to send me anything. So it's just really cool and I just feel special. That's cool. So yeah. <laughs> So I've got my Tarte Shape Tape in the color Fair and Neutral. And then I do really enjoy this as a eyeshadow base. I'm going to use the black sponge for this. You know, it's like because somebody sent me something, I want to be like, wow, you know. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's a sponge. It's a sponge. I don't know. You know, the thing, it's $14.99 for two sponges. I don't think that I said that. For that price, can I really, really recommend it? I mean, I have to be honest, otherwise nobody will believe me and I have to say no. Um, and that's only because these are in the same price range and they work better. And I'm just being honest. However, this is a really cool brand and it's a really cool idea. And I'm very thankful that they took a chance on me to send me something. I will say this, the pointed edge is a benefit. Like this has that kind of edge that you can cut with over here and stuff like that. But this is very useful, especially for when you need to get into like these tight places and stuff. So I definitely see myself keeping these on my desk here um, for when I need some really precise blending, especially when I'm doing like um, intricate detail body paints and stuff like that. So it is a different tool in that essence. I want to pick this one up so bad. I'm not going to lie. I, I just, I'm used to it, but it's so much softer. So getting a closer look at the concealer that I just blended out with this, it's like it blended it out too much um, to where it's too thin. Ay, ay, ay. I hate to say that, but I don't know. It just, it doesn't really look great. I hate to be like that, but I think, and I have some little black marks on my face. I'm trying to figure out if it's from the sponge or if it's from old mascara. No, oh, this is definitely from the sponge. Maybe I should have rinsed it out first, but I thought the point was that you're not supposed to get it wet. Oh, I hate this. I hate it. It's my first product ever sent to me, and it's, oh, there's debris on my face. No, I haven't put on mascara in a while. Is that from the sponge, really? It totally is from the sponge. Okay, it's totally from the sponge. Okay, so, unfortunately, this sponge is putting some kind of black, small debris onto my face. That sucks. So I'm just not gonna use that one anymore. Uh, the whole point of it is to not wet it. So I, I don't know, man, don't use the black one. Damn it. Well, I'm just gonna have to have a little black debris on my face. You're not gonna be able to see it on camera anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's only where I use the sponge app. Oh my gosh, this sucks. I don't want this to be happening. All right, so I'm just gonna use the pink one from now on because Unfortunately, this one is like shedding some very small like black particles. I can't with this anymore. I can't. I don't know. I need to... Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, that kind of sucks, but I'm not going to lie to you either. So, I mean... So, I'm just going to say it. For me, the only benefit of this sponge over any other sponge that I usually use is the pointed tip. That is what I would use it for. That's the only reason I would probably pull for it. Is it useful for that reason? Yes. Um, this black sponge I just don't recommend and that is because it put black particles over my face that are now embedded in my foundation which kind of sucks but this one was good you know and I I say that and I don't mean that for no reason like this one of course you can squeeze to get in but it will never be as tight as this one is here 
but that is the only benefit in my eyes that I see with this sponge over the sponge. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Conspiracy palette. Obviously, I've had it for since November of last year, and I know whether or not I use this a lot at this point. I will say this. I don't reach for it all the time, not because it's not a great palette, but because I have this little Z palette here that I use every time I do makeup pretty much. And that is just because recently I have been into kind of a natural like supermodel glow type of look, not so much all these colors and that type of thing. However, if I did need some colors, I would tell you that I would pull from this palette for this pink, which is probably my second favorite. My first favorite is Not A Fact, which is this deep purple. I wasn't expecting that one to be my favorite, but it is just really beautiful in the crease. It blends out nice into like a lighter shade. And I use this one almost every time I use this palette. I really enjoy this Illuminati too. It's like a different type of shade. I don't have anything like it. I like cheese dust. It is a little, uh, I don't know. It's not as creamy as like what I get in these palettes, the Anastasia Beverly Hills Norvina collection palettes. These one I live, die, and breathe for. All of them are very creamy and wonderful and I love them. Not to say that this palette isn't great, but the orange, there's better oranges in that palette than this one. This yellow is very unique. I have nothing like this yellow. It, um, for me, it's kind of nostalgic because I was watching Shane when he was making the food videos. So I do have some emotional attachment to that shade, but I like it because it is different. This Flaming Hot is an absolutely terrific true red. I love it. Tanacon is just a really great staple shade. For me, it would be comparable to like my creme brulee, which is what I use in my crease all the time. It's just a great crease shade. You could make a lot of different looks with this palette. You could do just kind of a regular everyday supermodel look with these shades up here. You can pump it up or do something crazy with all of these shades. I love that they put a black in it. I find that very important to bring depth to the outer V. This silver is absolutely terrific, but I will say this, my studio secrets, I don't know, I've had this forever. I'll be honest, it's probably expired, but this silver kills all silvers and it is better than the silver in this palette. Whenever I need a silver, I find myself reaching for this one. So do I pull for this palette all the time? time no I don't um, but I do pull for it for certain shades for me it's um it's like nostalgic it means a lot to me the packaging is beautiful you know Shane brought us along on the journey of making this palette and that makes it like m more special if that's what I want to say like I feel like I was there with him creating this and this makes this like just a beautiful piece to have like something very like it's an experience every time you hold it in your hand now I don't need that every time I do my makeup usually when I'm doing my makeup I'm like shit shit I'm gonna hurry I'm gonna hurry or I gotta be there I gotta do this I have this much time whatever I'm pulling this out okay when I need to do a specific shade this in here or when I get when I get funky crazy this but when I show people my palettes in here this is the prettiest most special palette to me than anything that I have just for its value and its story for its value in you know the creators of it and how far that they came with that and making an, a palette and experience has changed the way that I think about palettes I am not a person that buys a lot of things so when I set out to buy this, that was very purposeful. Like I wanted this palette badly. And you see that in the footage when I got it. It was absolutely a piece of my makeup story. And for me, it wasn't just Shane's story in making this, it was a part of my makeup story. I mean, when Jaclyn Hill put out Champagne Pop, I was losing my mind over it. And it wasn't just because she was so excited about it, it was because she included us and in how excited she was about it and making something as an influencer and selling it and feeling like I could be a part of something that she made. And I haven't been as excited for a product since that. And for that reason, this is a piece of me as well because I was there experiencing that. and. He made every choice about this palette very personal and you can feel that. And for me, that makes it just so special. Regardless of the shades that he chose or whatever, even though there's a lot of meaning in everything that 
is the essence of what this palette is. It is a piece of art by itself. So anyways, there's that. So I'm going to only use this palette today for my eyeshadow look, which is not going to be hard because there's a lot of transition shades, pops of colors. Every time I hold this palette, it's like, oh, it's just like, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful piece of art. I still have the outer packaging over here in my studio. Just like opening it and closing it is like, ah, it's just like so sad. It's like, listen to this. You don't really feel that way when you pick up something like this. This is just kind of like, oh, oh my god, you know, ah. At least that's how I feel about it. And it's got some stuff that I'm used to and I'm just doing and using real quick. You know, this, it's like, I am doing some makeup. You know, I'm going to use this and I'm going to get crazy with that. Um, most of the time I'm doing something neutral now. It hasn't been like that all the time. For a while when I was doing my makeup, I was doing something colorful every single day just to kind of experiment with stuff. I do pull for these a lot when I'm doing like colorful type of stuff. So I've looked at a lot of different looks with this palette. My favorite look that I have seen with this palette is by a girl named Makeup Misa. Makeup Misa. I'll link her channel down below, but she did a conspiracy palette review when it first came out, I do believe. And she did an eyeshadow look with it that is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'm gonna try to see if I can do something like that. So I'm gonna try to recreate this look to a certain extent. I might go down a different road a little bit, we'll see. So I followed her tutorial pretty much directly. If you wanna see how to do this, I'm just gonna link her video below because I pretty much followed her tutorial exactly to the T. It's just a really pretty combination. Okay, so that wraps up this video. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And just like Charlie said in the last video, click the little bell thing a jiggy so that you get notifications or whatever that thing is. Do that, sure, or I'll drop kick you in the throat.